Yes, hello and welcome to the BFL Footy Show. Proudly supported by McDonald's Ballarat and Ballarat Toyota. Yes, and we're back. Obviously, uh, last weekend was a big interleague clash between Ballarat and Geelong. We're back into the uh, normal fixture, fixture this weekend. Nutty, touching on the uh, interleague first, mate. First of all, welcome. Thank you, mate. Thanks for having me. Yeah, that's no, good for you to be here once again, mate. And a uh, big uh, interleague game last weekend. Just to touch on the senior game first. Um, I'll read the scores out, then we'll have a, a look at the game. Geelong, a uh, bit too good in the end. 13-12-90. Uh, defeated Ballarat 10-7-67. Um, for Ballarat, the goal is Dan Jordan kick two, and all singles to Bilton, Karras, Hobbs, Horbury, McCabe, McNamara, Shea, and Slate. Better players for Ballarat are Lee Burke, uh, Malcolm Nibbler, Jared Edwards, Brett Chambers, Jason McNamara, and Nathan Horbury. So, look, none of um, Ballarat jump out of the blocks, four goals to one at quarter time, led by 17 points, but uh, after that, Geelong showed their real class, and they were just a fraction dominant in the end. Yeah, look, it's, uh, th this game showed signs of uh, two years ago, I guess, and yep. shades of that, and uh, our Ballarat jumped along and uh, gave them a bit of a surprise. And I think on that occasion we jumped down to about a 40-point lead, but um, unfortunately we weren't able to emulate that, and um, <clears throat> yeah, Geelong showed their class from probably uh, quarter time on, yep. as you would say. Yep. They took their opportunities. Our guys really needed to uh, make sure that they grabbed every single opportunity that came their way, and unfortunately we weren't able to do that. I think... Um, you know, early in the last quarter, Ryan Waite had uh, a shot on goal which might have yeah. put us within a kick. If he had to kick that, who knows, we may have got a roll, run on and um, maybe gone on and, and, and taken the, the four points. But it um, wasn't meant to be, mate. We slipped down to uh, fifth place ranking now and yeah. uh, we take on Bendigo next year. Yeah, for sure. Now, you can't certainly um, follow the coaching staff. <coughs> they certainly put in an enormous amount of effort uh, leading into the game. Their campaign was um, second to none, so... Congratulations to Sean Malone and his team for the effort they put in. Yeah, look, Spider, he left no stone unturned uh, with his team. They did a sensational job. The guys are extremely prepared. Yeah. Uh, they certainly had all the players on board. And uh, look, at, I know the players had a sensational uh, experience being involved with the BFL in the league side. So, uh, yeah, those guys did a sensational job. And uh, we'll sit down with those guys and do an evaluation of the program and, um, yeah, start preparing for next year. Yep, for sure. Now we're touching on the... Um the Geelong v Ballarat under 18 game as well. Geelong 7 8, sorry, 7 9 51. Defeated Ballarat 6 8 44. At three quarter time, Geelong led 7 8 <laughs> to 2 4. So in the last quarter, Ballarat really came home with a win and they certainly uh, played some great footy in the, uh, in the last quarter. Nearly came up with a, uh, with a, with a great result with a win. Um, unfortunately, we just fell a fraction short, but uh, full credit to Tim Beach and his coaching staff. And I think these boys really enjoyed the campaign. And, and uh, just talking to the coaches after the game, they obviously they saw the improvement throughout the campaign from a few different players. So that's great to see. It holds those guys a good step for the future. Yeah, look, uh, these guys um, will be kicking themselves. I think you know the start obviously that they gave yeah. Geelong in that, this game. Um, Geelong obviously didn't kick a goal after half time. Uh, they restricted them to five points in the second half, and our boys uh, really got their game going and, and started to run the ball really well. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if they hadn't have uh, maybe given them that head start, who knows what might have happened. But uh, look, at the end of the day, Geelong uh, went away with the victory and uh, our guys are left licking their wounds. Yeah, the best player for Ballarat in the under 18s was Timothy Hill. He's from uh, from Sunbury, played a fair bit of senior footy this year. And uh, yeah, congratulations to Tim on a really good game. He's played what a fair bit of senior footy. Now, a, lot of, like a lot of those kids have played senior footy too. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I suppose the guys were very fortunate to, to be spoiled by so many good players in the under 18 competition yep. who have been up in the senior comp and, um, you know, uh, been exposed to that, uh, yep. that faster brand of football. Yeah, and the second uh, under-18 side um, played uh, the Ballerine Football League down at uh, the Geelong Sun Ground. Was it called School Stadium or Simmons Stadium? Simmons Stadium these days. JJ and, King um, Stadium. It's a great opportunity for those kids to obviously taste into league footy. They weren't obviously in the main side, but they still got a chance to represent Ballarat. And um, they had a pretty tough day at the office, Nunny. Uh, Ballerine 1921 uh, 34 defeated Ballarat 4 2 26. But a great opportunity to play the league footy. And also to play on a, uh, an AFL venue like uh, Simmons Stadium. Yeah, look, I was down at this game and uh, had, a, had a good look at this one. And uh, look, it, it was a great opportunity for the next tier of players to represent the league, which they may not have been given that opportunity yeah. in the past. So, you look, fantastic experience for those boys. And to play on an AFL venue as well was great. Uh, look, they went down there and they were playing against a, a Ballerine side that obviously, you know, similar to our first side and Geelong's yeah. under-18 team, uh, had a lot of players with senior football experience. And uh, look, unfortunately... Um, our guys weren't able to make too much of a dip. They had a couple of patches of really good play where they yeah. showed some, some really good signs. Yep. Uh, but look, at the end, uh, Ballerine were just too good for us. Yep. Now, the, uh, the senior netball uh, was also <coughs> played this level against Geelong. In, in the seniors, Geelong 65 defeated Ballarat 41. Uh, Catherine Michael shot 21 goals and Steph Stephanie Burns shot 13. In the under 18 and a half, uh, Geelong 55 defeated Ballarat 29 with uh, Emily Atkins uh, shooting 16 goals. So... 
a couple of pretty good wins there to Geelong as well. Yeah, look, our netballers uh, knew they were going to be up against it, especially, um, you know, obviously when uh, Ballarat didn't have access to any of the pride players who, uh, yeah. who were out. But look, that nothing against the, the girls who were picked in the side. They did a sensational job and they played uh, a really good brand of netball on the day. Uh, look, after half time, I think that they were sort of with Geelong in the senior game. Yeah. Uh, they played some really good netball and in the under 18 game, uh, our girls were, were really with Geelong as well in that first half too. So. Two years ago, uh, Ballarat beat Geelong, and uh, this time around Geelong were just too good for our under 18. So, yep. uh, yeah, look, uh, uh, some really good efforts, and the girls represented the league with uh, a lot of yep. pride and did a fantastic job. That's great. Now, you know, we touch on uh, inter league, that means a lot of uh, the competition's players have the weekend off, so I'm sure that uh, for this weekend's games, you've, uh, you've got some pretty fresh footballs and netballs ready and ready to go, I suppose, for the, um, you know, after seven or eight rounds in, they'll be looking to, looking to uh, I suppose, you know, Establish their, I suppose, positions in the finals. Those, those sides that um, they're in the finals, and obviously the teams are just outside, hoping to win a few games and, and force their way in. The first game we'll have a look at this weekend is Ballarat v Backus Marsh. Um, Ballarat been in great form, Nunny, uh, as we spoke about, um, you know, two shows ago. Backus Marsh have obviously improved a little bit as well. So this is a game you expect uh, Ballarat to win at home. Yeah, look, the, the Ballarat certainly won't be taking this game lightly, lightly because uh, Backus Marsh pushed uh, later later Sunbury only two weeks yeah. ago and uh, only just fell short by a couple of goals. So. Uh, they've got some great young kids who have come out of the under-18 program and uh, they're going to be very tough to beat. So Ball Ballarat is going to have to be on their game to win this one. For sure. The next game we'll have a look at is uh, Lake Wendry v, back, uh, sorry, Lake Wendry v Sebastopol. This game's at the Wendry Reserve on Saturday afternoon. Lake Wendry uh, recorded their first victory two weeks ago for the year. They've been pretty competitive, Lake Wendry, all year, even though they couldn't get any wins on the board early on. They didn't get um, they didn't get blown into the water at all. I think it's sort of only one or one and a half quarters of footy cost them each week. So this is a game I'd expect them to win at home. And they were looking forward to, I suppose, trying to get their second win for the year. And, you know, give themselves a sort of chance in that top six. Look, they've had a very tough run. Uh, there's no yeah. doubt about it. And now they've got a string of very winnable games sure, coming yeah. up. And uh, I, I would expect that they would beat Sebastopol. But, look, Sebastopol were fantastic against Ballarat in round yep. five. And uh, they've got a very good young running side. And if uh, Lake Wendere aren't on their game, um, yeah, look, I wouldn't be surprised if they let this one slip. But I think Lake Wendere might just be too good. For sure. Now, Mountain South and East Point, a really big game, I think. East Point... Uh, you know, really getting really getting their season together over the last couple of weeks. Had a really good win against uh, North City last round. If they can, uh, you know, jump in the cars, head down the highway, and uh, the win down there against Mount South, that really sets their season up. You no know, possibly chance to finish top four. This is a huge game in the context of both club season. Yeah. Um, if you look at both sides, then uh, who, whoever the winner is is going to be, uh, you know, really entrenched in that top yeah. six, and they're they're a long way to play in finals. And, and the loser will probably walk away with. Uh, you know, wondering what what might have happened. You look at East Point. If if they win this, you know they're right in there. They're right in there amongst yep. it. Yep. If they lose it. You know, all their good work of uh, knocking over North City last you know, two weeks ago uh, could come undone. So yeah, right, for sure. yeah, look, both sides really need to win this one. I think Mountain South will just get over the top of East Point. Yep. Yeah, no, good opinions there, Nani. I think uh, yeah, I think the game will be pretty close as well. Next game we'll have a look at is Sunbury v Melton. I just feel that Sunbury. Obviously, they're undefeated, but I just feel that they haven't played their best footy yet this year. And I think that getting a few players back from injury in the coming weeks, I reckon they'll start to really um, you know, put the foot down and have some really good wins coming up. So I reckon they'll be too strong at home against Melbourne on the weekend. Possibly haven't been tested um, yep. fully yet, you might say. Uh, look, they've had a, a couple of tough games here and there. Their, their game against Melton South under lights, where they only just got over the line by eight points, was a tough one. Yep. But uh, look, when they uh, come up to Ballarat or some of the Ballarat sides travel down there to yeah. play against Summary, that's when they'll really, uh, you know, be shown. Um, yeah, they'll really be tested, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, look, for mine, I think Summary is still the best team in the competition yeah. at this stage. Um, time will tell whether they hold on to that mantle. For sure, and probably the match of the round, but no doubt about this, is um, is North Ballarat City v Redan. This game is played on Sunday at Eureka Stadium, Nutty. It is. And uh, look, both sides are, you know, still. I think they're, they're, I suppose their window is still open in terms of winning the Premiership this year. Um, but North City have, uh, have had a couple of d the losses the last couple of weeks, and they'd be desperate to bounce back on the winners list. And, uh, and I suppose it's caused a little bit of an upset. I suppose it would be an upset because Redan have undefeated and, um, and playing some pretty good footy themselves. But at home, I reckon North City might be a fraction too good. Look, Redan are flying at the moment. Uh, at this point in the season, to be uh, five and zip, yeah. they couldn't be happy heading into the into the uh, interleague break. But um, yeah, this is going to be a very tough game for them because I know North Ballarat City will be keen to uh, get back on the winners list after two straight losses. Yep. And, um, and on the flip side, North Ballarat City won't want to be uh, heading into this game too blase either yep. because uh, Redan, as they've shown already over the first two months of the season, they're uh, they're a very good football team. So yep. this is a tough one. I think North Ballarat City might get up in this one. Yeah, uh, it'd be a great game to get along to, obviously. 
Now, uh, that sums up a really b- big weekend of footy action coming up. So all the best to all the players out there that are playing this weekend. And Nunny, the, the winners of the Spirit, Spirit of Football Netball Award from the under-16 age group last week, uh, Daniel Butler from Lake Wendouree. Yeah, good young player from the Lakers. And uh, Meredith Carter from Redan. So yeah. congratulations to those two young players. Yeah, they had, uh, had great performances, uh, obviously, in Round 5, and they were presented with their certificates and, uh, and their medals last weekend. Fantastic. Well done to both those two people for, uh, for winning their awards last weekend. Now, the launch of the uh, the Red Photos in the J-Zone J magazine, Nunny? Yeah, jump on the BFOG website, and you'll see the links there to uh, head over to the Red Photos to, to so if you want yeah. to purchase any photos photos taken at uh, BFL venues on the weekend and then obviously the J-Zone for the young kids out there if they want to have a look at uh, J-Zone jump onto the, that uh, online magazine and have a look at some of the content on there. For sure. Now we've, we've certainly plugged the um, the uh, live schools application the last few shows and hopefully people have, um, have jumped onto the BFL website and, uh, and downloaded the iPhone uh, onto their smartphone. It's a great thing to have. I mean it's just great to to um, you know, if you're if you're down at the AFL or wherever it might be, and you just want to know what's happening in the local game, yeah, pick absolutely. Straight away. I use it all the time. It's fantastic. Great initiative, and uh, look, it's a fantastic way to keep in touch with what's happening yeah. in uh, BFL senior circles. So jump on the website, click on the iPhone. That's it, and uh, make sure you save that uh, page to your to your home page on your on your phone. Very good, mate. Now, Danny, thanks for joining us again, mate. And uh, big weekend of footy action coming. I'm looking forward to discussing the results with you uh, next show. Can't wait, Brades. Very good. Thanks so much for joining us on the BFL Football Show for another show this uh, this lovely uh, what is it Wednesday afternoon. Uh, thanks for your company. Look forward to uh, hopefully you can join us next week. And as we should always say, this show is purely supported by McDonald's Ballarat and always Ballarat Toyota. For now, goodbye.